Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Life Optimized Podcast. I am Dr. Neil Paulvin, and we ep- during every episode, we talk about how you can optimize your life, health, brain, and work. So today we have a really great episode with Kamal from Nebula Genomics, and we're going to do a really uh, deep dive and also give some basic information about how the advances in DNA technology, how you can use your DNA, uh, results to use it to improve your health and how you feel and what still may be futuristic. And we're going to kind of do a deep dive why Nebula is different than some of the other products out there and why you should definitely look into it and consider checking out your DNA. So we are going to introduce Kamal here in a second. His bio, and I want his bio, and he's much younger than me, so I'm really kind of jealous here. So we're going to, Kamal is a co-founder of Nebula Genomics. He was a Gates Cambridge scholar at the University of Cambridge and is a graduate of Harvard University where he conducted research on neurological and embryological development studied under the family father of genomics, Professor George Church. After Harvard, Kamal joined Google and led teams with the Research and Machine Intelligence Organization. Kamal's experience working in labs allowed him to see firsthand how rapidly whole genome sequencing technology was developing. You notice a significant gap in the WGS consumer market and lack of accessibility to comprehensive genomic data. This coupled with his desire to democratize sequencing research led to the creation of Nebula Genomics with the goal of making personal genomics data more mainstream, accessible, and meaningful to consumers. For his work, Kamal has received multiple honors, including being named to the Forbes 30 under 30 list. He's also currently working towards MD PhD at Stanford University School of Medicine. There's a mouthful. So Kamal, thanks for hopping on the Life Optimized podcast. And so what specifically kind of did you see in the genomics market and what like things potentially by like 23andMe and other other uh, tools that are out there that this wasn't hitting the market and then kind of led to the development of Nebula? Yeah, I think the key observation we had at the time, so we started Nebula in, in 2018, uh, launched in I think really 2019. Uh, the key observation we had was that personal genomics had become mainstream um, really over the course of the 2010s um, with products from companies like 23andMe and, and Ancestry DNA. Uh, but what we realized was that personal genomics has kind of had, had kind of failed to have a large impact on health and wellness. So most of the applications around personal genomics were focused on um, ancestry. So like, where are you from? What's your uh, background? Like what's your, based on your genetics, what's your ancestral makeup? That's been kind of like the fun use case. Um, it was the most popular Christmas present for you know several years in a row during this time period. And we wanted to figure out why personal genomics had become mainstream, but you know, it had come to a point where tens of millions of people had done it in the US, but had it really had a huge impact on the average consumer's uh, health and wellness or, or uh, like life optimization. Um, so Nebula Genomics, our goal was to, when we started the company, was really to create a next generation personal genomics business that was focused more uh, on generating the kind of data that could be used for health and wellness applications. Um, and that's why we decided to launch with a whole genome sequencing as our flagship product. So we explained to people what they're getting when, they, when we talk about whole genome sequencing, why it's different than, I mean, again, people some, may have heard of SNPs like MTHFR or other things that people use to use for like what specific me- medicine they take. And you guys have taken this to a whole new level where you're able to evaluate your whole genome, your whole DNA. So explain to people why that's important, how you guys do it. Most of the genetic tests people have heard of, um, like the really popular ones, are what's called, they're using you know, SNP chip or DNA microarray. So effectively, what that's like is let's call it, let's let's compare your genome to a book. Um, normally, when you read a book, you think about reading it cover to cover, end to end, right? Reading the entire thing. Most of these DNA tests, largely because of prohibitive costs, are doing what's essentially like the cliff notes. So you can imagine them reading, you know, one word every ten pages in a book, and they're really just looking at very specific regions of your DNA that are known to have an outsized effect on health and wellness. And they're just looking at those specific places and that's what they're reporting on. Um, 
like I mentioned, the reason for that was really cost. The cost to read your genome like a book end to end, which we call whole genome sequencing, uh, was too expensive for a really long time. When we launched Nebula, was kind of like an inflection point where the cost was really going down drastically and was approaching a price point um, that we thought we could hit that was more realistic for consumers to access. So that was really key to our vision at Nebula was use a type of technology that generates orders of magnitude more data and can be interpreted in ways that could be more uh, meaningful to health and wellness optimization. And a lot of the motivation for this is the fact that you know, a lot of the way your genetics affects, can affect your health or can affect disease risk or whatever it may be, is is complicated. It's not usually one part of your G DNA, one small part, one SNP, um, that's determining uh, what, what the outcome or what your phenotype is going to be. It might be many, many different parts of your genome, both coding and, and non-coding regions that each might have a small effect. And you kind of need to understand the total sum of those effects and its overall impact on whatever traits we might be looking at. So whole genome sequencing lends itself very well to more comprehensive analysis of your DNA and, and your genetics. So just kind of so people understand. So explain to people what coding and non-coding sequences are and then explain how your how Nebula kind of can take all that data. I know I've looked at my report and you kind of are able to compartmentalize things under certain categories so people can understand the all the DNA tests and all the, their DNA markers that they have. So just explain to me a little more detail in terms of what you're looking at, but with a coding, non-coding region and how you kind of put that whole message together them so they can understand it. Yeah, so your DNA is essentially a string of letters, right? A, T, Cs, and Gs. And there's, you know, approximately 3 billion of these letters. Um, and that, that makes up uh, your, your genetic material. Um, the challenge we have in genomics is understanding when you have differences, when you have mutations or variants in those letters than like the average person. So your genome might be slightly different than somebody else's genome. Which of those differences actually have a big or important impact in health? Um, which of those maybe, which of those could be pathologic? Which of those could be good? Which of those maybe just don't do anything? That's been a very key challenge in genomics is mapping those differences, understanding the differences people have, and trying to map them to what they actually mean practically. Um, so historically, the way this has been done is we look at genes. So your genome, like I mentioned, is 3 billion letters. 98% of that isn't in genes. 98% of that is in, you know, we call it the dark matter of your genome. We don't know 100% what it does and about you have about 20,000 genes and that makes a small part of your actual genome so these genes turn into proteins which do things in your cells historically you know it's been much easier to link phenotypes or link uh, genes or variants that exist in these genes which are coding sequences we call that coding sequences it's been much easier to link those to disease or traits since they're easier to study uh, but only more recently, in the more recent decades, have we been able to link the other 99%, the non-coding part of your genome, to different types of traits or diseases and understand their impact. So what we're truly understanding today is that your DNA is, the different parts of your DNA might have very different effects. Some might be coding, you know, might result in genes. Some might not result in genes. But there's a complex interaction or regulation between all of these elements that if you have a variant in a non-coding element, it can still have a really big impact. Historically, DNA microarray or SNP chip uh, has looked at, you know, across the 3 billion, again, letters in your genome, they've looked at about half a million to a million of these. So they looked at a half a million to a million that we know what effect they have that are well annotated, that have been well studied. Um, what we're able to do with whole genome sequencing is look at 100% of your DNA. So we're not just looking at DNA in genes, in coding regions. We're looking at DNA in the other parts. Uh, we're looking at, at letters or variants in the other parts of your genome that can also have an impact. So long story short, really to summarize, is your DNA is really complex. It's really, really large. Um, there are me and you, for instance, most of our DNA is exactly the same but a small percentage of it is different and understanding what those differences mean is really complicated. And we really only understand what a small percentage of those differences do. 
And historically, these genetic tests have only looked at those small percentage of variants that we understand. We look at all of them. So this means we generate reports that are continuously updated as science advances, and we're able to look at regions of your genome that historically uh, have not been reported on in these genetic tests. Yeah, so you hit on the point that I wanted to, under to kind of exact uh, amplify here that A, um, this is different than SNF testing. This is also different than now people are hearing about biological age testing and epigenetics, which is some modifications of the DNA, which are totally different than what uh, Nebula is doing here. This is looking at the just your DNA pairs, like you mentioned, the, the all the different letter pairs that we were just talking about. Now, and the other thing, I, I, people used to find, I, patients used to find it annoying even with like 23 and me and Ancestry, but now it's become actually kind of exciting is, as you mentioned, Everything that we, everything that you find you're, today, you can't translate, but eventually you may find the key to translating it a week from now, three years from now. So you're always going to get more information about what your DNA is telling you. So that's what makes this kind of interesting. And like, I don't say game is not the best way to put it, but it's, you're always going to find something new about yourself. So how do you talk to people when they say, well, I don't want to, like, I mean, I know people just with one gene, like the APOE gene, which is related to Alzheimer's, like Chris Hemsworth, uh, people know him from the Avengers, things like that, kind of brought to the fore. How do, have people asked you, hey, I don't, I'm scared to know what my DNA tells me. I just want to live my life. I don't want to know every little thing that's going to happen to me 30 years from now. And then other people who want it now, with the, people are just data driven. They want to know everything from the heart rate to their DNA. So do people come to the company and ask, okay, I'm scared. How do you address that type of uh, concern? Yeah, I think that's a pretty common concern with genetic tests in general, is this idea that you're going to get some information that is not actionable, and it's just scary, right? Like learning you might have Huntington's disease. Um, some people wouldn't want to know that because there's not really much you can do. The thing is, we don't report any diagnostics. So we have we do whole genome sequencing. We provide all the raw data. And we generate some reports. The reports we provide won't tell you anything scary. Um, we don't tell you anything diagnostic, but we enable you if you want to. You're able to analyze and use your raw data however you see fit. So that's really a key piece of Nebula is democratizing access to your data in a way that's really cost effective. Um, so we've had, you know, there's customers that are bioinformaticians or there's, they're scientists and they come to us to get whole genome sequencing. And they're more interested in their raw data than they are in the reports that we generate. Um, but as a Nebula customer, we don't report anything diagnostic. Um, we're not diagnosing you with a disease. We're not telling you anything scary. We're giving you more like health and wellness information um, that might op help you optimize um, some like problem areas in your life, for instance, sleep or diet or fitness, um, things like that. But we're not gonna tell you that you're uh, have a high risk for Alzheimer's or anything like that. This is a pretty simple test to do. I mean, I, I had it done. This is not like some complicated blood test. It's not painful. So how do people get their DNA to send to you guys initially? What's involved in the whole process? Or it's very simple. Yeah, we just a buccal swab. So that's a cheek swab. So we send you a kit to your house. You take a swab. You run it along your cheeks. Um, you send it back. And then we'll process it end to end um, at our lab. And it usually comes back, what, two to four weeks or four to six weeks? It really depends. Yeah, sometimes it can be, we have a lot of samples, so sometimes two to three months. You're busy. It's a good thing. Yeah, it's good for business. So when patients get their the genome done, are they? Is it everything is done through a doctor? Can they do it just on their own and say, hey, I want to pay and get my DNA tested? Do you have somebody, like a, a doctor or a genetic counselor who's going to go through those data, or does it have to be done under a doctor's supervision? Yeah, so we're launching a genetic counseling service soon. Um, we don't actually uh, provide that yet. Um, we have customers, um, so B2B customers that run concierge clinics or specialty clinics where they use our reports to consult. Um, they use our data and they generate reports essentially to consult with patients. But that's not a service we're offering today. Uh, in the future, we're planning on going more clinical with the testing, so offering things like PGX, uh, potentially hereditary cancer screening, et cetera. Uh, the benefits of whole genome sequencing is that it's almost like a superset of all these other genetic tests. So even though we're not clinical today, we're not diagnostic today, in the future with the type of data we're generating, we're going to be able to do a lot of other tests just by changing the interpretation pipeline. 
that we're using. So what data can we determine now? What is usable? What is can in, what information can people expect to get if they when they if they do their test tomorrow? Yeah. So now they get um, there's three levels to the report. Um, one is like the most consumer friendly levels that includes traits, um, easy to digest, easy to read, um, some ancestry information, um, and then a library which links their genetics to a bunch of studies that have come out. So those studies identify a bunch of variants and we provide summaries of those studies and then summaries of how that might relate to your genetics. The second level is a bunch of web-based tools we provide to browse your raw data. So this is literally just scanning across your genome and you can look at annotated variants and find links to literature about what those variants mean. And that's more for power users. And that's what we typically find is that power users, doctors, et cetera, clinical geneticists, those are the people that are using our web-based tools to kind of scan across genomes, um, look at specific genes they're interested in and identify rare variants that are annotated by public databases like, like OMIM, uh, for instance. Um, the third level of our report is really just all the raw data. So this can be up to a hundred to 300 gigs actually um, of raw data <clears throat> that we provide, we make readily available. We don't try to lock you in to the platform at all. Um, so you can download that raw data. You can do everything from the primary analysis, secondary, et cetera. Um, you can run your own variant interpretation, uh, variant calling pipelines if you want. Um, that's like really for expert users, which we do have many, many of. Um, but for the average consumer, it's really just the first part of the report that's interesting. It's kind of the curated and uh, manicured uh, part of it where we single out studies that might be interesting to you. So when they get this information, is it kind of is it self directed at this point where they're just good? You kind of have that they self review what okay you say you have this specific trait and then this is what we this is what what this means and they may get follow up information in the future. What how, what does that entail usually? Yeah, that's right. It's self directed now, um, so we don't provide any today. We don't provide any like counseling services. Um, like I mentioned, that's that's in the works to change soon. So we will be providing genetic counseling. So that'll be a little bit more of a guided tour across your Nebula report. Um, but today, yeah, it's kind of like Ancestry DNA or Twenty Three and Me. That product, the consumer product, is uh, fully uh, self guided. And then, so right now, like you said, you're not really providing any medical data. It's not going to tell them if they have risk for Huntington's or Parkinson's or Alzheimer's or any of those types of things. It's more kind of more basic type data that they can uh, use on their own. That's right. Yeah. So we're not fully non-diagnostic today. And then is it, what are the plans for the future with that? Like you said, is it the main goal going to have to be your own genetic counseling, to have other add-ons? Where, where does the future go? I mean, the future of DNA testing is bright and what can be done with it and what we hope to do in the future. So what, where, does, where does Nebula go from here? Yeah, I mean, we think sequencing is becoming commoditized. So actual whole genome sequence will be a commodity and the IP and product is really the reporting. So the interpretation of that genetic data. Um, our vision is that whole genome sequencing, we wanna be the hub for your genetic data. So we wanna be the place you come to to get your whole genome sequenced. And we want to enable you to pick and choose reports that are interesting to you, whether those are clinical or whether those are consumer. Um, like I mentioned, whole genome sequencing is almost like a superset of all these other genetic tests that you see other companies doing, like exome sequencing, SNP chip, et cetera. Um, so feasibly, all the reports you're seeing from other providers, all the same reports, for the most part, can be generated uh, using whole genome sequencing data, um, plus like some validation and some other things you might need to do. So that's how we envision the future for Nebula being is we'll have a clinical grade whole genome sequence. We'll store it for you or you can store it yourself and you'll be able to pick and choose reports that are interesting to you. Um, and some reports will require physician sign off and some consultation, some reports won't. Um, and that'll be up to the consumer to pick things that are interesting to them based on their family history or whatever they want to learn. And then, so the, so beyond that, so right now, what is the cost? Do let people know what the cost is for doing Nebula? The upfront cost, I think is like 250 for the 30X whole genome sequencing product. We also have a $100 standard whole genome sequencing product, which is more comparable to 23andMe. Um, then we have a premium, really like 
super, super high accuracy, ultra deep $900 sequencing product. Um, and what the difference is between these three is how many times we read your genome. So for the standard, we read your genome once. For the deep, we read it you know, effectively 30 times. It's what's called 30x coverage. And the ultra deep, we read it 100 times. So you get more and more accuracy uh, depending on what you're looking for. But most, most customers are happy with the deep or the standard. What does doing it the 30x give you that the first, the one first read you wouldn't give somebody? Yeah, so if you are, let's say you're like proofreading a book. If you read it one time, you know, you might not be sure, for sure if you found any errors or not. You might have missed something. Um, that's how it works with whole genome sequencing as well. Um, for really like rare variants where our priors are that, you know, this variant is super rare in the population. It's unlikely that you're going to have it. We can't just see it one time when we read across your genome and be very confident that it's there. So what we typically do is read it many times. And if we see it every time or many of those times, then it means you probably do have the actual really rare mutation. Um, so that's, that's, if you're looking, if you want to look at low prevalence, uh, so really rare variants, if you like suspect maybe you have one or you have a family history of something that might be really rare, um, you might want to pick the 30X or the 100X. Uh, for variants that are fairly common, the standard whole genome sequencing is, is fine and plenty accurate. So for mo most applications, you're pretty good just doing standard uh, 1X whole genome sequencing. And then in, in general, so what do people come and ask you questions about what they're asking for things that, that you don't provide how do you that do you kind of say no that's not what we do that's what somebody else does where again do what are the questions how do you again where the whole sequence of genome is different than what else is out there in different services yeah i'd say if they're looking people come to us looking for you know carrier testing um or things like that and we don't provide those today so we usually point them to the right resources or the right organizations that can help them. We, we have a popular blog as well um, that highlights a lot of these companies. Um, and it's a great resource for people looking to find the right genetic test for them. So yeah, we, we, we do frequently have people coming to us, you know, emailing us, reaching out to us saying, hey, I have, you know, my grandma or this or that has a history of, of whatever, and I'm concerned I might have it as well. Um, will your test help me do that? And we say, you know, that's not what our test is for. That's not how our reports work today. And you probably need some, uh, you know, consult with an expert and we typically will help point them in the right direction for that. Yeah, this is not a test for fertility or trying to figure out things in terms of, again, if you have some medical issue, like, based on race or anything else that's not what this is really for this is just overall analysis of your dna for now and then as you said as things move on you'll be able to give them more and more information as as, as the dna availability becomes available now with i meant i didn't mention to online oh, sorry uh, mentioned online before is now with everything kind of technology going at, at warp speed here things with like ai and other technologies going again a mile a minute at this point do you foresee things in the next year going really quickly? Is this something that you, we may have to wait 10, 20, 40 years for the next level of DNA sequencing to really emerge here? How quickly is this a developing field compared to AI or something else where it seems like every minute something is changing? Yeah, I think it's uh, the, the reduction in cost in sequencing is outpacing Moore's law. So I think there's an argument to be made that sequencing and biotechnology is advancing faster um, then, then AI, um, and will do so, uh, over the coming decades. Um, so I, I think, yeah, I think the field is really progressing exponentially today. Um, the types of modalities and sequencing technologies that are available are exploding. Um, in the U S now there's tons of competitors entering the market, which is great for patients and providers, um, before really there was only one platform that you could sequence on. Now there's half a dozen that are in the market and there'll probably be dozens over the next few years. Um, so I think it's a great time to be a, a genome scientist. It's a great time to be a genetic counselor, a clinical geneticist. Uh, I just expect the adoption to really take off over the coming years. The cost goes down and the utility uh, sequencing goes up. No, I mean, I must've gotten emails. I was at a conference recently where everybody 
there seems to be a new one popping up here all the time now. So yep. is your service one where I get my like, patients want to know, okay, I can take, I have a psychiatric illness, I have this illness, can I take this certain med? Am I good with caffeine? Is that something you guys provide? Again, that's not something that, that's done through Nebula. Yeah, so for PGX specifically, so for pharmacogenomics, like which drugs are safe, which drugs may not be so safe, um, which like in what cases you fast metabolize or not, those we're launching soon. We don't do that right now. And that's a clinical report. So that's going to come, you know, with physician sign off and uh, doctor's note and all that stuff. Um, we do launch for, for things like caffeine. We do have uh, things like that in our reports and different nutrients that you might be, um, you know, extra sensitive to uh, that is included uh, in the reports, and like the standard report today, you know, we'll tell you fun things like, you know, are you, what type of, if you're, if you're a weightlifter, for instance, what kind of training regime um, would be optimal for you if you're trying to do muscle growth, you're targeting endurance, um, those types of, of reports are included in our test today. And then, and how long, and I got my report, so it's a pretty comprehensive report, what about yeah. so it's multiple pages and don't get overwhelmed initially. I think when, again, like you said, once you kind of understand what you guys are, what your, your operation is now, that's what you're, that's, it's going to take some time to go through it. Um, but again, it's not going to tell you life specific medical disease yet. But again, hopefully you guys have that coming because people want to, there are people who want to know that, I mean, and want to be able to work to prevent those things. That's why hopefully where medicine is going, where we're not going to always treat the illness when it's unfortunately taken over. Somebody want to be able to try to, work on preventing or limiting disease as we go on. And then how, how I know you mentioned that you guys do updates when the technology comes available. That's something that, that happens whenever the technology comes available or whenever that ability becomes possible, which is every three, six months, every once a year, patients will get an update. How's that work? Yeah, s several times a month, we'll update the reports. Um, and that means adding new studies into the library that have come out that we deem that our team of scientists curate as being high quality. Um, yeah, but several times a month, that's typically what we're doing. So I really appreciate you coming on. Nebula Genomics is, again, one of the forerunners in the full genome space. It's something that you're going to want to do um, when you feel comfortable get, understand that information, but it's something that is, we move forward, I have my patients doing um, and we'll have doing more. So let people know how they can find your website, find the product. Are you guys, are you national, international, somewhere in between? International, yeah. We've done sequencing for people in over 100 countries thus far. So um, really, we're not restricted anywhere. Where's the most obscure place? You, do you know where the most obscure place you've done? Like Antarctica or something? Or Yeah, we've done. I mean, I think we've sequenced. I think we've even shipped kits to. I think we've shipped kits to French Polynesia in the past. Uh, we've sequenced astronauts. But does this give any specific information to athletes? And you said you mentioned in terms of what exercises that they're able to do. That's something that they would be able to learn now from their from their whole genome. Yeah, yeah. So all of the like applications of genomics that are you know not diagnostic, like health and wellness applications, um, we we report on all of that. So anything you really find in a lot of other consumer tests will be. Uh, in our reports. We're really just restricted around the diagnostic stuff. How do people find you? What's the website? And they can sign up and get the, sit, the kit sent to their home, correct? Yeah, they can sign up to get the kit sent to their home. You can just Google Nebula Genomics. Um, it'll be the first thing that comes up or Google even, you know, buy whole genome sequencing. And we're the first thing that comes up for that. Um, so if you're interested in whole genome sequencing, you, you know, you'll be able to find us um, pretty easily. I mean, I, I use their service again, not paying both the cheek swab, very easy to do, very kind of self-contained kit, which makes it so much easier to use. And you just ship it back to them and uh, get your information in two to three months. And you definitely will learn something that you did not know about yourself. And maybe you can alter in the future. So Kamal, I really appreciate you coming on. I hope to hear more about genome sequencing in the future and uh, have a great day. Thanks so much.